two, one, fever. Jackpot, break. Jackpot. Jackpot. Hello and welcome back to the Yamanote. Alex here and today I'm taking a look at Space Invaders Forever, a compilation of three modern takes on the legendary title franchise out now for the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch. And I think Space Invaders really needs no introduction. Created in 1978 by Taito engineer Tomohiro Nishikado and becoming the foundational modern video game, I mean, it has been ported to almost every system. So, going straight into the game, what we first found is a very bare-bones but clean presentation, with a title screen that takes us to the game selection itself. For each game you see a little video, a brief description, number of players and your current world rank in the leaderboards. The first game is... Space Invaders Extreme. Originally released in 2008 to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the franchise and re-released in 2018 with various improvements, Space Invaders Extreme is all about the score, an exhilarating experience focused on keeping your heat chain going while using a variety of power-ups to clean the screen, all while chasing those elusive UFOs to gain a chance at entering the space inducing fever mode. Three, two, one, fever. At first the game is a bit confusing with too much going on and a certain level of visual clutter, but after a couple of credits you start to get into the rhythm thanks in part to the music itself. The FX sounds perfectly integrated into the soundtrack and the game becomes a flow experience of music and visual effects. At the end of its state, a boss battle awaits and after that, an evaluation of your performance and the possibility to choose your path through a root system like in Darius or Outrun. Now, I think that the visual style of the game is functional but a bit dated and at times it looks like a shooter version of a rhythm game like Bitmania or Groove Coaster, but Space Invaders Extreme still stands as a great experience, kind of the perfect crossover between a score chaser shooting up and a dance rave. <laughs> Next we have Space Invaders Gigamax, created as a special arcade game for the 40th anniversary of the franchise in 2018, and while Space Invaders Extreme was all about the scoring, Gigamax is more of a reimagining of the original arcade experience with improved visuals and a 4-player mode, and I don't have footage of the 4-player mode, but believe me. Gigamax really shines as a casual gaming experience to play with friends, regardless of their shooting skills. After all, everybody knows Space Invaders, and this game adds little twists to the original formula with also having an amazing, truly amazing soundtrack by Taito's home music studio, Suntata. Graphics are extremely crisp and they look great no matter the size of the TV screen. One caveat though is that the game is extremely short, but while sometimes that can be seen as an inconvenience, in this case I think it's an excellent choice because Gigamax never wears out its welcome and keeps the spirit fresh for new players while also allowing them to finish it in one sitting. But beware, when I say it's extremely short, I mean it. With little practice you can finish the game in just 12 minutes. Moving on we have Arkanoid vs Space Invaders a part of the mobile game release in 2016. The game is a crossover of Space Invaders with another classic title franchise, Arkanoid. 
Arkanoid vs Space Invaders has a simple story with the invaders launching an all-out attack on the galaxy and you, pilot of the bows, being the last best hope of the human race and Nadia giving you support from the Arkanoid mothership. Nothing spectacular, but it helps to give some special flavor to the 150 different levels that you can also try in hard mode. So I have to say that Arkanoid has always been a personal favorite of mine, and going in, I wasn't so sure about this game being a part of a mobile game. But surprise, I've enjoyed this crossover a lot. I really like the bright and colorful designs for the invaders, and the levels feature an interesting mix of styles with stages ranging from straight shooting everything inside to more puzzle-like ones when you have to figure out the way to successfully conquer the stage. Power-ups that you can buy with the game currency, along with boss battles every 15 levels. The game also features an interesting mechanic of having different characters with their own unique abilities, adding an extra level of depth and these characters come from Titus' long gaming history, with some obvious choices like Bob and Bob from Bubble Bubble, but also Super Chase HQ, Elevator Action, Groove Coaster, Psycho Force, New Zealand Story, Darius, Darius Burst, even some deep cuts like Sonic Plasma. <laughs> You can unlock them by clearing levels or reaching certain requirements. And speaking of past characters, look at that! There's that Su-chan from the Dance of the Ghost series! Super Cinco! It's with the controls that we find the biggest differences between the PS4 and the Switch. Because while you can play this game holding the Switch like a giant phone and using the touch capabilities of the screen, for the PS4 the only way to play it is using the rather small DualShock touchpad. Rounding up the game there's also a time attack mode where you have to destroy as many space invaders as possible in 60 seconds with progressively complex patterns of invaders. This mode can be played with or without character skills and there are separate online leaderboards for it. The time attack mode is really fun. It keeps you going back to try and improve your last score and the coins here can be used in the main mode. It's in a lot the sense of grind for power-ups during story mode. My biggest complaint is that the actual game area is sandwiched between two great blocks with nothing on them. While playing you'll probably forget about this but I think that Given the celebratory nature of this title, it's a missed opportunity to have some custom borders with the various title characters present on in this game. Nonetheless, it's a very interesting take on two notable franchises. And hey, it's just great to have Tetsu Chan back. And speaking of good things, one common theme among the three games is having a superb soundtrack, with music for the three titles being provided by Taito's own house band, Suntata. The music is just awesome and perfectly sets the mood for each game. And seriously, I could have the title screen music on forever and be totally fine. Now, the game retails for 30 euro, 30 dollars, 30 pounds, depending on the region, and that's around 10 bucks for each game. A fair price if you know the type of games that you are getting. Cool more games have been fitted into this collection or more materials. 
probably, but I think the ones that made the cat really deliver on providing a modern Space Invaders experience. It's a good balance between arcade intensive and more chill experiences. And honestly, I just had a ton of fun with this compilation. And by the way, there's a new collector edition coming out now, almost a year after the original release, but only for the Switch. Come on, Inning, where's the love for PS4 users? Anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed this review as much as I have enjoyed doing it, and thanks for watching, subscribe, like, and until the next time, thank you for traveling with the Yamanote, and have a nice rest of your trip. Bye!